Chapter 8, Lesson 4, Multiple Representation of Functions. You will learn how to represent functions using words and equations, as well as how to represent them using tables and graphs. Words and equations can be used to describe functions. For example, when a rate is expressed in words, it can be written as an equation with variables. When you write an equation, determine what variables to use to represent different, e different quantities. Letter A. The drama club is holding a bake sale. They are charging $5 for each pie they sell. Write an equation to find the total amount earned, T, for P pies. We are writing an equation like we have done before, only this time they don't have us use Y and X. We are using instead T and P. We'll start with the total, T, equals, if it's $5 for every pie, that means one pie cost $5, Two pie cost, pies cost $10. Five pies cost $25. What operation am I doing in my head? Good, I'm multiplying. We take five and we multiply it by the number of pies. So the equation is T equals five times P. Letter B. In a science report, Maya finds that the average adult breathes 14 times each minute when not active. Write an equation to find the total breaths B a non-active person takes in M minutes. We're going to start with our total, and our variable for total are the breaths, or B, equals, if they take 14 breaths, or if they breathe 14 times each minute, and what you're doing is you're taking that 14 times and multiplying it by the number of minutes. So the equation is B equals 14M. Letter C. The mouse can travel 8 miles per hour. Write an equation to find the total distance D a mouse can travel in H hours. Total distance is D equals... 8 miles times hours. So D equals 8H. Letter D. Samantha can make 36 cookies each hour. Write an equation to find the total number of cookies, C, so total number, that she can make in H hours. C equals, and we start with C because it's the total, and we take 36 and multiply it by H hours. So the equation is C equals 36H. Tables and graphs can also be used to represent functions. So what we're doing on this page is we are doing, we are writing the equations like we've done on the front page, but we're also going to use our skills from previous lessons. We're going to put it in a function table, and then we're going to graph it. In addition, we are going to analyze the graph. So letter A. The student council is holding a car wash to raise money. They are charging $7 for each car they wash. Write an equation and make a function table to show the relationship between the number of cars washed C and the total amount earned T. Total equals seven dollars times the amount of car cars washed and that equation we're just going to put in this center box they don't give us any amounts to plug in so we'll start at the left and plug in zero one two three in the center column we're going to start plugging in our c values t equals seven times zero which is zero. T equals seven times one, which is seven. T equals seven times two, which is 14. And T equals seven times three, which is 21. 
graph the ordered pairs of the function and analyze the graph. Before we can graph them, what we need to do is label everything. Our independent variable, normally our x value, goes on the bottom axis. In this case, we don't have x, but our independent variable would be the cars washed or our variable c. Which means on the left hand side, this would be our total earned. Now, our C values over here count by ones, and we can, we can actually count by ones on the bottom here. There's enough room. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're going to make sure we write those numbers on those lines, not in the boxes. For total earned, we have to go from zero to 21. There are not 21 boxes here, so we can't count by ones. In fact, if we counted by twos, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, that also would not be enough. But if we count by threes, we will have enough room. So count by threes. Three, six, again on the lines, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. We want to fill up as much of the graph as possible, which is why we're spacing out these numbers as much as we can, but we still need to make them fit. From here we plot our points, 0, 0, 1, 7 is about here, 2, 14, and 3, 21. Once we have those, we can go ahead and graph our line. Oops. Helps if I'm on the line. Let me erase this for a moment. Okay. So let's go back to the line. Let's try that again. Make sure we have arrows on both sides. I'm just going to do a little bit of adjusting here. Make sure you use a ruler when you graph your lines. And also make sure that there are arrows on both ends. Which it looks like this one didn't draw an arrow, so we'll just put an arrow in here. Not a big deal. Okay, but we're not done. It says, analyze the graph. So if you take a look at this graph, it is a straight line. Because it's a straight line, we would say the graph is linear. The word line is in linear. And then we also need to say something about its relationship. So if we take a look, we're talking about cars being washed and the amount of money we earn. So we can then say the amount earned drag this down. The amount earned for washing cars increases because it goes up by seven dollars for each car. You could also say the amount earned increases seven dollars for every car wash. You could also say for every car wash the total amount earned increases by seven dollars. It doesn't matter how you word it as long as you say something about the relationship and the keyword in there is increases. Let's take a look at B. 
While in normal flight, a bald eagle flies at an average speed of 30 miles per hour. Write an equation and make a function table to show the relationship between the total distance d that a bald eagle can travel in h hours. So total distance is d equals 30 times the amount of hours. So that's the equation that goes in our box here. d equals 30h. It doesn't give us a set amount, so we're going to plug in 0, 1, 2, and 3. Just going to see if I can adjust this line a little bit. Maybe not. Okay. In the center, we're going to plug in our H values. So D equals 30 times 0. And I'm going to go over the boxes a little bit, but that's okay. 30 times 0 is 0. And the next one, D equals 30 times 1, which is 30. D equals 30 times 2, which is 60. And D equals 30 times 3, which is 90. Graph the ordered pairs of the function and analyze the graph. On the bottom is our independent variable, which is the number of hours. And on the left-hand side on our y-axis, our dependent variable is the distance. And we can just put in parentheses miles. We can count by ones on the bottom again. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And try your best to get them on the line. Let me see if I can get a thinner pen here. Let me try that again. One, there we go. Two, three, four, five, and six. That's better. Now on the left, we have to go from zero to 90. We can't count by ones, twos, threes. We gotta think a little bit bigger. Can you think of what we can count by to get from zero to 90 and to use as much of this graph as possible? Good, you can count by tens. Nice easy number to count by. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. Just made it. And we plot our points. 0, 0, 130, 260, and 390. Okay, we are going to graph our line. Again, please use a straight edge or a ruler if you have it. And again, for some reason, my arrow didn't show up, so we'll just draw one in. Lastly, we have to analyze the graph. So again, we would say the graph is linear. because it's a straight line. And now let's say something more specific about this graph. We can say the distance, what does it do, increase or decrease? Does it get bigger or smaller? It increases, gets bigger, increases 30 miles, For what? Good. Every hour. Okay. 
And that's the end of lesson four.